Welcome back. Today you're going to be watching me replace the Conrad bearings, or so I thought I was going to be doing. I thought I was just going to be doing a little bit of preventative maintenance. You know, spun bearings on these cars are quite common, so I, I wanted to, you know, replace them to make sure I didn't have that problem in the future. Anyway, let's take a look and see what happened. We're guiding automobiles, yeah. Okay, I've got everything I need for this section. Um, just gonna replace the bearings. Uh, it doesn't seem like much, but this is a big job, I think. Uh, so I have the new bearings, which are just in a box here. Uh, and I've got new bolts because the guide calls for new bolts. And then some assembly lube. So it should be pretty straightforward. Okay, here's the idea. I've turned the crank uh, just with the bolt here until these two journals are at their lowest point, which should give me enough space, hopefully, to get the journal out, swap out the bearings. Let's try it. Gonna be very careful to keep everything in the same orientation. I think you just have to give it a little tap to get it loose. Okay. That journal is off. Uh, so I'm going to push down on the cylinder. Whoa, okay, that was super, super easy. Uh, <laughs> not what I expected. Uh, and try and get these off. And they just, wow, they come off super, super easy. Okay, so the bottom one, uh, it's got some, like, streaking in it. Uh, so I don't know if that's, you consider that worn. And the top one. Uh, clean it off here. Top one also, you know, just a bit worn. So when I look at them, like they're not marked top and bottom. Let's go look at the other ones. Okay, these are what I bought. My concern is this. Copper and aluminum. And these are the, the actual bearings. Uh, they're clearly two different colors. So copper and aluminum, I suppose. Just gonna go double check that part number. <laughs> okay, this is what I'm concerned about. Here are the two types of bearings that are in that package. One's like more of a chrome and one's kind of a white. Um, they have different part numbers. Like the box kit, the kit that I got uh, it is the right one. Like that's the one on the engine tech site for this engine. Um, that means that one of these, I assume, is an upper and one is a lower. One has a U in it and one has an L in it. <laughs> um, it's definitely not clear which is which. Oh, there's a little ridge in this one. There's a ridge in this one too. Like they look the same. They look so much the same. 
little whatever chamfer or whatever it is is the same spot there's a little ridge here the texture looks the same the only thing different is the color and these ones just look like they're painted because right, they have a little bit of paint of the paint scratched off but why paint half of them like why paint four of them and not the other four after some investigation uh, there's no clear answer so i'm gonna go with the uh the numbers that are on the side meaning that all the sort of chrome ones are the lowers and all the white ones are the uppers. Okay, so I'm gonna reach in. I feel like smaller hands would be a benefit here. I'm just gonna pull, pull up the cylinder a bit, swing it out. So I've sort of swung it out this way. This is from my angle here. And then I'm gonna drop and press in like, like that. Okay, this is what it looks like now. Now I'll put assembly lube on both of them and we'll be good to go. Don't really know how much to put on, so I'm just gonna coat it lightly. I mean, it's to stop it from cold starting, right? So I can't imagine that too much is, I mean, obviously not a liter of it, but I'll just put a good amount. That's fine, it's just fine. The ARP bolts come with this stuff. And you just put it on the bolt before installing it. It's supposed to help torque it properly. So with that grease on it, it's supposed to be torqued properly. What we'll do is reach in here, get my connecting rod back. Again, if you have an assistant with small hands, it might help. Bring it back up here. all this back the way it was in my case the numbers go towards the timing t timing chain now I'll just put these in by hand for now the massive directions card says to 25 foot-pounds it's interesting it says Hopefully you can be able to see this, make this out. To use a stretch method, if you have this thing to do that, I don't know what that is, so I'm just gonna go to 25 foot-pounds. Okay, 25 foot-pounds. It's not a lot. And I'm just gonna double check those instructions because that doesn't seem like a lot. Okay, 25 pounds it is. Uh, now I'm gonna do, normally I guess you would just go in order, but since this one's already up, I'll just do this one and I'll do the other three. Actually, I'm gonna do all the other three the same. Number four. Okay, 
Okay, one and four done. So that we have two and three at the top. So let's do two. What? Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Why? Why? Oh, my God. I don't know if you can see this right here. So I just pulled this out. There is no bearing. No bearing. Then right here, I'll try and zoom in here. That to me looks like two bearings kind of jammed together that have been worn away. <laughs> um, well, let's take a look. Wow. I guess, I guess, um, engines can run with spun bearings. <sighs> yeah, no bearing in the top. Nice. These aren't like sharp. They look sharpened. <laughs> Just gonna get a something that won't damage the crank here. So that, I'm pretty sure that's two bearings. Yeah, there we go. So my new engine uh, was running, uh, but had a spun bearing. Yeah, I'm gonna call it a wrap for a day <laughs> because uh, if I have to pull the crank out to have it machined because of that spun bearing. Yeah, that's it for today. You should subscribe. That clip was three weeks ago and uh, I gotta tell you, I was just ready to scrap the whole car, to be honest, just scrap the whole thing. Um, it's just so frustrating when things keep going wrong. Uh, I just needed some, I, I knew that I just needed some cool up here. So here I am, I haven't touched it. Everything's exactly where I left it uh, out in the garage. I haven't been back to work on it at all. Uh, so I'm getting back into it now. And I knew, like I knew it was gonna be expensive uh, in the long run to, to create a track car. It just, it's, it's tough. Like can I even call it a track car if it's only been on the track once? Uh, so I'm gonna bring it, bring, take the engine apart uh, bring it to a machine shop and have them look at the crank. It should be cheap to fix. Uh, I'll look at the block too. If it's not cheap, well, that car, <laughs> I don't know if it'll survive. 
because uh, I got this voice in the back of my head yelling, you know, you should have bought a three series. Where's the, you should have bought a three series. And who knows, maybe I would have had more problems, but the voice is there. I'm going to ignore that voice. Uh, I'm going to keep going and I have all winter now to get it up and running. Uh, and I'm up over, what, 200 subscribers now? Uh, although I feel now kind of like you guys are just tuning in as if it's like the, the walking dead of cars. Like you just want to see what goes horribly wrong every week. Uh, but we're going to change that. We're going to turn things around. We're going to show some victories. And we're going to show you building awesome stuff, hopefully. Uh, anyway, I do appreciate you watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.